this point, uh, The Washington Post is reporting that the grand jury will sit three days a week for six months. The reporter who reported that story joins us now by phone. One of the bylines on this Washington Post scoop, David Farenthold, Washington Post political reporter, lucky for us, especially today, an MSNBC political analyst joins us by phone. Um, David Farenthold, we have been reading and digesting your reporting for the last, I don't know, 20 minutes. Um, t tell us how, f first of all, is there anything else you can tell us about what you're reporting this hour? No, I mean, we've, this is a pretty important step uh, that, that, that the DA has impaneled this grand jury with the idea that they're going to hear the evidence that's been gathered over these two years, that they're going to eventually make decisions on who to charge. But there's still a lot of steps ahead. You know, the evidence has to be presented and the, the grand jury has to decide. And that may come out with charges against Donald Trump or the Trump organization or maybe somebody you've never heard of or maybe nobody. Uh, the important thing is that the prosecutors think they have enough evidence to start this process, which is a pretty important step. The story has this line. It's likely that Trump related testimony in the secret proceeding has already begun. Um, we see people who um, we know from from your reporting and other news organizations have made clear they've cooperated and met with investigators, people like Michael Cohen and Jennifer Weisselberg. Um, j just in terms of quantifying how many witnesses you believe Cy Vance's office has engaged, or do they represent the most valuable? Are they sort of middling? Where, where do you put sort of those two very public voices in terms of what you understand about the Vance investigation? Well, I don't doubt that both of them will be important uh, in different ways. Cohen is, is good in establishing Trump's intent, his M.O. You know, I'm going to tell you how Donald Trump acted in the, you know, in Michael Cohen's words, how reckless Trump was and how disregarding he was of the law. Jennifer Weisselberg can speak stri strictly to one part, but a very important part of this, which is the compensation paid to Alan Weisselberg, the Trump Organization CFO, and to his son, and any taxes that might have been paid or not paid on those things. So this is going to be a really complicated case. The things that they're trying to prove Trump did wrong are going to involve complex bank transactions, assessments of property. So there's going to be accountants, assessors, lawyers, lots of paper, lots of documents. But there are very few people like Michael Cohen who saw Trump through the years and can explain to the jury, look, this is how he works. So I do think Cohen's going to be very important there. One of the big boons to Cy Vance's investigation was the Supreme Court decision that released Donald Trump's tax returns to him. How integral are those to the kind of testimony from witnesses that can speak, as you're describing, to discrete aspects of Trump's business practices? Well, I have to imagine they're going to be extremely important. No one has ever had this level of data about Donald Trump. No one has ever seen this deeply into Trump's finances as Cy Vance has. And so I think if there's going to be cases made that Trump misrepresented himself to lenders or to taxing authorities, the proof will be in those documents. And it just to me, one sort of tantalizing element of this was the Trump Foundation. If you remember, Trump had a charity back in 2016 uh, that I wrote a lot about back then. Its tax returns, which we did get to see, they were public were prepared by the same accountants, the same people at Trump Org. And when we look closely at those, they had all kinds of errors. Trump, in fact, got sued by the New York Attorney General and had to pay $2 million, in part because of the errors on the Trump Foundation's tax returns. And so if you extrapolate that out to millions of pages and hundreds of entities, it's very possible that there's going to be evidence from those tax returns put in front of the grand jury.